At the height of last year's North Korean missile crisis, Secretary of Defense James Mattis was in Silicon Valley visiting DIUX, the Defense Department's Innovation Unit Experimental. Presumably, he had more than a passing interest in the companies it's working with on miniature satellites for looking at any spot on the planet 24-7, even through clouds. Artificial intelligent programs for scanning millions of aerial images to detect changes in activities. Maritime drones for patrolling remote coastlines. The Defense Department recently set up a forward operating base of sorts right here in the middle of California's Silicon Valley to get closer to the new technologies they need for some of their more immediate strategic and tactical needs. Don't let the artillery pieces fool you. The idea is to act less like the military and the government and more like venture capitalists and entrepreneurs. I am the managing partner in an interim capacity at DIUX. So you're using a VC term. That's not a, a military term, managing that partner. That is not a military term. So there's a lot of things that we do here that are done differently. Navy Commander Sean Heritage is not your typical commanding officer, nor is DIUX a typical military office with uniforms, cubicles, and the DODs, the Department of Defense's, more regimented mindset. We have a strong relationship with VCs across the, uh, the Silicon Valley uh, ecosystem, and we leverage a lot of their portfolio companies to solve DOD problems. For small tech startups, the military's bureaucracy and lengthy procurement requirements can consume more time and resources than they can afford. That's especially true for new technology projects that could be obsolete before they get through the traditional contracting process. Tech entrepreneur Raj Shah feared that with his first startup. After my 10th meeting with some senior general, you know, realizing how long things were taking, we stopped pursuing that market. Shah, a former Air Force F-16 pilot, a McKinsey consultant, and entrepreneur, went back on active duty to run DIUX for two years before recently returning to the startup world. There is a civil military divide. And so because of that, many companies don't look to DOD as a, as a customer. And so what DIUX was trying to do was bridge that gap, bridge the gap of understanding and bridge the gap of process. The military has been closely connected with the Silicon Valley since it started up in the 60s by funding the first semiconductor developers and the first satellite surveillance and submarine missile systems after the Russians launched the space and arms race with Sputnik. We are building an infrastructure of sensors in space to change the way we collect information of what we do here on Earth. DIUX is helping aerospace engineer and entrepreneur Haim Banazada to kickstart Capella Space, his startup, building a new generation of smaller, cheaper, and for some purposes, better satellites out of this nondescript facility in San Francisco. We can quickly redesign and reiterate, and we do everything here in-house. It allows us to go from a design and a concept and a paper napkin to where we are now, which is we're launching a satellite in two years. Like so many Silicon Valley startups, from Hewlett Packard to Google, Payam developed his idea while studying at Stanford. He took a Hacking for Defense course, partially sponsored by DIUX. We can do global coverage, high revisit time, night and day, all weather with satellites, looking at everywhere on Earth. As innovative as the technology team, so was DIUX's contracting supervisor, Lauren Schmidt, who was able to get Capella Space, a $10 million contract, in less than three months, which could be modified after the project started. We've done about 60 of these deals so far, worth about $200 million, and our average time from posting our solicitation to designing the project and awarding the project, getting it on contract, is about 75 to 90 days, which is light speed for the Department of Defense. At this period of time, we counted 38,963 cars in Paris. You can go all over the world. So Kevin O'Brien is the chief operating the officer of Orbital Walmart, Insight, Depot, an artificial Depot, intelligence and machine learning company DIUX is working with to decipher the avalanche of new aerial imagery too massive for humans to analyze in real time. The power of these new constellations is that you can look at every corner, every inch of the planet every day. And so when you think about that, we can identify uh, different types of objects, whether they're cars, whether they're trains, whether they're planes, whether it's roads or new buildings to be developed.
Orbital Insight preferred working with commercial clients until the military could catch up to Silicon Valley's deal-making speed. Our first contract with DIUX took about six months. Um, our contracts that we're working with them now take about six weeks. DIUX is different from DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, the original and much larger military R&D agency, which works on more futuristic, longer-term technology projects. Our business model is focused on solving DOD problems faster, cheaper, and better than traditional mechanisms. Therefore, we do not go for a 100% solution out of the gate looking 10 years down the road. We look for an immediate solution that is practical right out of the chute. Most of DIUX's funding priorities come directly from what they call operators, military people in the field working on real problems, like trying to coordinate mid-air refueling operations in the Middle East using a whiteboard of all things. DIUX contracted a Silicon Valley software company to develop a management app with an internal Air Force team recruited by DIUX's Colonel Enrique Oti. They started writing the code and they started learning from a commercial company how to write the code, how to use the technologies, and they were able to put together from nothing to uh, working in combat operations in four months. The Air Force recently canceled a more than half billion dollar contract with Northrop Grumman, a major defense contractor for being more than two years overdue in delivering similar types of air operation software. The nature of AI is, uh, is a long-term technology that will be useful for defensive and perhaps offensive purposes as well. Former Google CEO and Alphabet Chairman Eric Schmidt chairs the Defense Department's Innovation Board and has been working on guidelines for the military's use of artificial intelligence. More than 3,000 Google employees recently signed a petition, and a dozen engineers have resigned in protest to some of Google's defense work using AI, highlighting ethical concerns some technologists have with contributing to what they consider to be the business of war. Guess what? The government likes to look at hotspots around the world very persistently and very reliably. And so there's a lot of commonality between what we do for the commercial sector as well as for, for the defense and intelligence. And so we have very strict privacy guidelines. We have very strict rules on what we will and what we would not do. Uh, we've never come across anything to saying that's a showstopper. Colorful socks is very important. Um, that's good cred. Yeah, you have to wear colorful socks. You know, a lot of times Star Wars socks, but I forgot those today. <laughs> as much as they make light of adapting the Silicon Valley work style while serving on the new front lines of tech warfare, most of the military personnel assigned to DIUX have served overseas as war fighters with tactical units. They appreciate the difference between a cool new technology they are helping develop and its intended mission with a much different set of risk reward metrics. We would rather leverage autonomous technology to map out the battlefield before a human has to go into harm's way, trying to buy down risk. Buying down the risk by leveraging the nation's tech capital. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Mike Suray reporting from Mountain View, California.